Hi, I'm here today to show you an interesting board available for pre-order. The board is a raw converter from DVI to LVDS. It does not scale the image or resample the colors. It does no processing and adds no real input lag, only a few microseconds in line buffer mode. It can operate at pixel clocks of up to 450 MHz by specification, or up to 650 MHz by my testing. When paired with the 27-inch M270 HHF-L10 panel, 1080p at up to 270 Hz is doable. For inputs and outputs, the board has 4-channel LVDS output to the panel, a connector for a button and LED board, and a connector for a power supply and backlight driver board. Buttons are present on the board for simplified testing. All connectors are clearly labeled on the board for easy hookup. Additionally, there are test points for data enable, horizontal sync, and vertical sync for those interested in more scientific applications. A serial header on the board connects to the microcontroller and allows reconfiguration, firmware updates, diagnostics, and EDID upload through a USB to serial board adapter. Switchable EDIDs allows you to upload your best overclocked settings to the board, eliminating the need for unreliable driver hacks and EDID overrides. The factory EDID can be reloaded with the button combination as a safety fallback. Backlight strobing, or pulsing the backlight, in a manner synchronized with the video timings to reduce perceived motion blur, is supported. How can this board be used? With most LCD panels on the market, most TVs and monitors use LVDS internally to send video data to the panel. By using this board, you eliminate all other electronics between your computer and panel, eliminating display latency, unwanted features such as interpolated frames or color reconfiguration, and enabling display overclocking. We are happy to help with any of the steps in the setup process. If in doubt, contact us. The basic steps are 0. Determine if compatible. Determine what panel you have and verify interface compatibility. You're looking for 4-channel LVDS at 24 bits per pixel. Determine how the ZSWorks board will connect to your existing power supply and backlight driver if you are using them. This is recommended on TV and larger panels. Step 1. Order the board. Please do not do this without verifying compatibility. Step 2. Connect the backlight and power supply. Verify that you can turn the backlight on and off. Increase and decrease the brightness using the onboard buttons. 3. Connect the external button board if desired. 4. If necessary, repin the existing video cable to match the ZSWorks board. Step 5. Overclock it. Step 6. Take your overclocked settings, add them to an EDID, and upload it to the board. Step 7. Enjoy your no-hassle, fast monitor. Hardware configuration options. The board comes with two configuration options. An optional integrated LED driver can handle most backlights less than 30 inch in size and supports high-frequency PWM dimming, PWM-free current dimming, or strobing mode. An optional DC to DC converter can power the panel, giving the board a wider input voltage range, or it can be omitted for direct 5 volt or 12 volt operation, depending on what panel is used. The input can be wired directly to an external brick or the PC's power supply, eliminating the brick completely. You will need cables to connect the panel and the interface board. You can modify your existing cables or ZSWorks can supply cables for your specific panel at an extra cost depending on the complexity of the cable. Send your panel model number for a quote. The DVI based board is available for pre-order now. How much? $150 for the board, including shipping worldwide. The optional hardware, backlight driver and panel DC to DC, are $10 each. The custom video cables will cost between $30 and $100 depending on complexity. These are made in-house by hand and it is a time-consuming process. What about support? This includes the engineer who designed the board directly helping you, with Skype video if needed. If you have firmware problems, 
you get the engineer who coded the firmware directly helping you. That's the level of support you get from us. We know that these are going to be put into overclocked environments and often running out of specification, so warranty will be limited to 30 days after receipt. That said, refunds and board component failures will be dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis. We are flexible and here to help. How will the pre-order work? Names will be collected until the order count reaches 150. Once 150 has been reached, we will then contact again for verification of intent. Once 100 orders have been verified, payment collection will begin and manufacturing will also begin shortly after. About a month after manufacturing has started, boards should be ready to ship. Payment can be by PayPal or Bitcoin. Are we trustworthy? Yes. I have perfect heatware under Kerthix. Have sold around 80 IBM T221 adapters under Kerthix at gmail.com in the IBM T221 Yahoo group. And I've handled a group buy before, motherboards a long time ago on Extreme Systems. Some miscellaneous anticipated questions. What about FreeSync over D DVI and HDMI? This has not been tested yet. We are waiting on drivers that enable the feature. That said, due to the nature of direct conversion that is implemented, it is likely to work. Isn't DVI a dying interface? No, DVI is not a dying interface. It is a mature interface. Traditionally, ports and graphics cards last a long time. You can still buy cards with VGA output. DisplayPort came out some years ago and is still in the catching on phase. We expect Dual Link DVI to be on graphics cards for many years to come. If it's not, we'll make an adapter that will change HDMI 2 to DVI at full speed, at low cost, relatively. DVI is also an overclocker friendly interface, more so than DisplayPort. In general, it just works even through minor instability or going beyond specification. With DisplayPort, if you go out of specification, go to sleep, or the display just doesn't like the current situation, the display will logically unplug itself. That said, we are internally testing a DisplayPort version and are working on it, but it will not be available for a few months yet. What about OverDrive? OverDrive is not supported due to the direct nature of the video conversion. You can try a software solution if you want to experiment with this feature. Radions have support for this in the drivers. Thanks for watching. Feel free to contact support at zsworks.com with any questions regarding compatibility, operation, setup, configuration, or pre-orders, or anything else. Thanks.